we are going to talk about bootstrap, one of the two resampling methods that we'll see in this uh, module. Bootstrapping was proposed by Efron in 79, and my, the main idea is to obtain multiple samples from the original sample. And then from using all these samples, we're going to compute a statistics of interest in each one of these samples and the variability across of the variability of this statistic across all the bootstrap samples is an estimate of the standard error uh, of the parameter that we're looking at. So basically we are mimicking the sampling mechanism described in central limit th theorem to obtain a variance of distribution for the sample statistics. So let's recall the central limit theorem. Let's suppose that we have a population uh, with mean 2 and standard deviation 1 uh, represented there in the figure. Actually, this is a gamma distribution, and I chose the gamma distribution so we don't have the usual neat uh, symmetric distribution like normal distribution. So this is slightly skewed. And from this population, I'm going to obtain a sample of size 100. In the first square, you have the code to obtain in R a sample of size 100 from a gamma distribution. And in R, the, the gamma distribution is parameterized by a shape and rate parameter. Actually, this should have been an R gamma, not D gamma. Um, and the mean of, of a gamma distribution with this parameterization is given by the ratio of uh, the shape over rate and the standard deviation by the square root of the shape over rate squared. Okay, just a uh, detail about the gamma distribution. So if we compute in the, the sample of size 100, the mean and the standard deviation, I obtain for this sample 1.9 and the standard deviation of 0 0.96, very close estimates that are very close to the true parameters of the population as expected, because samples tend to behave similar to the population. Now, what the central limit theorem tells us is actually how uh, multiple samples from this population would behave in terms of their means. So if we draw a lot of, of samples from uh, this population, which again has a mean of 2 and a standard deviation of 1, the distribution of the means of those samples would tend to be a normal distribution represented below with mean, the mean of all these means, tended to be equal to the mean of the population because I'm going to obtain samples uh, that sometimes uh, have a mean below the mean of the population and sometimes above the mean of the population and this behavior is symmetrical um, and also that the standard deviation of this distribution is given by the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample sizes that I'm uh, considering here. So I'm considering a sample of size 100, so divide, divided by the square root of 100. And to the standard deviation, we give a special name that is called the standard error. So the standard error will give me an idea about how much variability I have in the, statist in the statistics mean um, that are computed from multiple sam samples come from, coming from a population. We actually don't really have the standard deviation of the population most of the times, but we know we can substitute the standard deviation of the population by the standard deviation of our original sample, and you get an estimate of the standard error. So if we go to our original sample uh, and compute the standard deviation of the original sample by divided the square root of 100, I get 0 0.096, very similar to what is expected by the, uh, the central limit theorem. So hopefully this is not uh, new, this is just a simplification of the central limit theorem. I'm going to show you now how we can obtain the standard error but compute it through bootstrapping. So let's consider our original sample, the sample that you took in the first place of uh, size 100. Okay, and I have represented there 25 values out of the 100 values of the sample. So we're going to obtain a new sample from this sample of the same size. So I'm going to obtain a sample of a, a size 100 from this original sample. But I'm going to do this by allowing that each value may be picked multiple times. 
okay otherwise obviously i could only get one sample of size 100 from the original sample which would be the same one so i'm going to uh, sample my original sample a hundred times so i'm going to create a new sample but i'm going to allow uh, the each element to be sampled multiple times so replacement equals true replace equals two this is what is called sample with replacement and i'm going to compute the mean of this new sample i'm going to call it sample bootstrap one the mean of bootstrap strap one okay and this is the mean of that sample now i'm going to repeat this process many times thousands of times so I'm going to create a cycle where at each time I sample the original sample of size 100, I compute the mean of that sample and I store it in this vector, okay? So the mean of bootstraps is going to be a vector that stores the 10,000 uh, samples of the different uh, bootstrap samples. Now, if I do a, an histogram for all those means, what I obtain is a distribution of the, the, the means, the bootstrap means, and this distribution is going to tend uh, to normality, exactly as the central limit theorem uh, um, result regarding samples from the population states. Okay, but now again, I'm doing samples from a sample, not from the two population. So the mean of this uh, distribution, it's not around the, the true mean, if you recall the population that mean two so it's not going to be around that mean it's going to be around the mean of uh, the original sample okay but the standard deviation the standard deviation of this distribution it's going to uh, be very similar to the, the standard deviation of the distribution of means from samples from the population so it's going to be very similar to the standard deviation uh, stated in central limit theorem so if I compute the standard deviation of all the means from the bootstrap, so standard deviation of the means of the bootstraps, I get 0 0.095. So this standard deviation, it's, uh, it's very similar to the standard error, which is the standard deviation of the, the, the distribution of sample means, the standard error that we compute earlier uh, using the result of the central limit theorem, 0 0.96. Okay? So... What's happening here is that this bootstrap process is mimicking uh, the, the, the sampling distribution uh, from the parameter of interest, but despite the fact that in terms of the position of this distribution being uh, around the original sample, um, the shape is going to be very similar to the true sh shape of the sampling distribution. So here I have on the left histogram, I have the distribution of many samples uh, drawn from the population. Okay, so this is uh, this is what the central limit theorem states, and the distribution of the samples tends to be normal around the true mean of the population, so too, and with a standard deviation that is given by the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample sizes. And on the right side. I have the distributions of the bootstrap samples, so samples from the original sample. And despite the fact that, again, it's going to be centered in the wrong place because it's going to be centered around the, 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 the mean of the original sample, its shape, the shape of this distribution, is very similar to uh, the sampling distribution. So I can use this to get the standard deviation of uh, um, of this of the sampling distribution which gives me the sample error okay so we've seen uh, uh, the construction of the bootstrap which again it it looks a bit confusing that I'm sampling from the the, 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 the sample but it's a very simple pr procedure I'm just again getting uh, uh, different samples from the original samples and I'll do this many times um, it's not obvious how many times I have to do this, but basically I have to, I want enough times that I can reconstruct this distribution in, um, in a, a reasonable uh, approximation. So usually we consider it, you know, tens of thousands of times 
or or even more uh, if the the computational is it's not very heavy okay but I, as i was saying we've seen this for a very simple example of for the standard error of the mean and for that one we do have the the, the result the theoretical result uh, but this idea can be applied to many other situations when it's not obvious how to compute the standard error of uh, the the parameter of interest okay in particular we'll see in the lab uh, the example of computing the standard error for the median uh, a parameter that until now we didn't you, you didn't have a, a, a way of computing its standard error okay so make sure that uh, you read the correspondent chapter in the book go through the lab uh, session and try to solve the proposed exercises